Welcome to K-Beauty This or That, Episode 7. Now, if you're new to K-Beauty This or That, this is a game we play with two really similar Korean skincare products. We put them side by side and do a comparison review, ultimately deciding which one is better, right? This or that. So today, I've got the battle of star ingredients. It's gonna be a good one. So we're gonna be doing a showdown between two niacinamide-focused serums from TM and Purito. Plus, I've got a ceramides, cholesterol, and fatty acid shoulder shake showdown <laughs> between two great ceramide moisturizers from Illy Yoon and Innisfree. Plus, stay tuned to the end for our Sika sleeping pack showdown between Laneige and Purito. So if you are so ready to get this, this or that on, give the video a big thumbs up and let's get started. <music> So let's start off with the TM Vita B3 Source Serum up against the Purito Galacto Niacin 97 Essence. TM Vita B3 Source uses 10% of niacinamide, which is a really high concentration of niacinamide, but it is also formulated with another star ingredient, which is 2% of Arbutin. Now you hear me talk about Arbutin a lot because I'm a really big fan of Arbutin. It's an excellent skin brightening ingredient, particularly good if you suffer from sun damage. It's a great brightening ingredient to go towards. All right, let's talk texture because wow, this is so light and elegant. And if you've tried a few niacinamide serums in your time, you know that the words light and elegant don't usually describe a niacinamide serum, you know? It is light, it is elegant, it is quickly absorbed. Like, wow, no stickiness, no tackiness, no weird feeling afterwards, super easy to layer up, really easy to add into a multi-layered routine. Like everything about this texture was just, very, very surprising to me in the best way possible. I was incredibly impressed. Now, I'm a big fan of the benefits too. You know, this will 100% help you brighten up your skin and it's gonna be particularly effective for hyperpigmentation left over from a pimple. I also noticed this has a good um, redness reduction benefit. Uh, it did help with inflamed pimples. It wasn't like it hits you over the head, wow, like calming kind of um, benefit, but it definitely did help. Now, other things I noticed with this one, I did notice that there was a little bit more refinement in the texture of my skin from using this. That makes sense because niacinamide, especially as high as 10%, can really help um, speed up your skin cycle. So it will help your skin shed dead skin cells a little bit more uh, quickly. The other thing to be aware of is Arbutin, a fabulous ingredient, but it can cause dryness on the skin. So if you do have sensitive skin, if you're prone to dryness on your skin, just be aware if you wanna start using this product and maybe um, only add it into your routine a few nights a week to kind of help buffer um, those side effects. Let's talk Purito Galacto Nine in 97 Power Essence, AKA the Power Rangers Essence. <laughs> this reminds me so much of Power Rangers, I don't even know, okay? <laughs> Anyways, this features 5% of niacinamide. Now before you start to think that that is a downgrade from the TM, hold your horses. We're gonna talk about this in just a second. It is definitely less but it doesn't mean that it is a downgrade. Now this also features 92% of Galactomyces Ferment, which is kind of the secret sauce to a lot of first essences. And Galactomyces Ferment, really great for hydrating the skin, but it also has a really good benefit for brightening up the skin. Now the texture on this one was surprising, but not quite in the way that the TM was. This is definitely more of that complicated texture category. Now this is deceiving because in the bottle, and once you pump it out onto your skin, it definitely looks really runny and light and hydrating, but it almost transforms in between your fingertips to something that feels a little bit more nourishing, moisturizing, and frankly, oily. Very light oil, but there is an oil slip to this that was unexpected. And that actually makes this, um, once it's absorbed in the skin, it makes this wear a little bit more medium weight on the skin. And it does leave on the top layer of your skin, it will leave some shininess and a little richness on top of your skin, something to be aware of. So even though this has less niacinamide than the TM, this 100% still brightens up your face though. 
it will still brighten your skin. It will give you those good complexion benefits and help with hyperpigmentation. And quite frankly, I don't even think that it works slower than the TM, which would be kind of the natural assumption, you know, less niacinamide, it will work, but it will work slower. No, I think it worked at the same rate, to be completely honest with you. I don't feel that I sacrificed anything in brightening benefits by going with 5% of niacinamide versus the 10%. What I do think that you sacrifice though with the differences in percentages are some of the, what I deem like acne care uh, benefits. You're probably with the Purito not gonna see as much of the pore refinement and the texture refinement on the skin and the anti-inflammation benefits, maybe not so much. I think that this does help reduce redness on the skin, but as far as like maybe helping with inflamed pimples, not as much. So I would say go for that TM Vita B3 Source Serum if you are looking for pore refinement, texture refinement on the skin, anti-inflammation benefits, and sebum control. Because remember, TM utilizes 10% of niacinamide, and that's where we start to bring in some more of those like acne care benefits into the party. So definitely go for TM if those are your goals. Go for this <laughs> Purito Galacto Niacin 97 Power Essence, Power Rangers. Go for this one if you want those anti-aging benefits. You definitely got the brightening goals, but you want your niacinamide serum to stimulate collagen production on your skin, to improve the structure of your skin, fighting those fine lines and wrinkles. Pirito's got you covered because remember, this utilizes 5% of niacinamide, and that is really the ideal range to uh, get that collagen stimulation going on the skin. So both really excellent niacinamide serums, but they're totally different depending on what you need for your skin. Next up, Innisfree Green Tea Probiotics Cream versus Iliun Ceramide Ado Concentrate Cream. Both of these moisturizers utilize my holy trinity of ingredients, which is ceramides, cholesterol, and fatty acids. And this is really the ideal combination of ingredients if you want to support or strengthen your moisture barrier. They are so nourishing and healing for your skin. And just a word to the wise, if you're searching on the ingredients list for the word ceramides, you might have a hard time finding them. And that's because these creams use pseudo ceramides or man-made ceramides. They're a little cheaper to formulate, um, but they do contain all the same benefits as regular ceramides. So you're gonna find them on the ingredients list under the name MEA. So let's start with the Innisfree Green Tea and Probiotics Cream. And I have to tell you, just like reading through the list is super exciting because there's a lot of goodies on here. This utilizes two different types of MEA pseudo ceramides as well as just regular ceramides. Now let's talk probiotics quickly because that's definitely a big trend in skincare recently, right? Like first we needed it in all of our foods and now we need to put it on our skin. And really, I mean like my take on, on probiotics is that it's just fermented ingredients and so most of us actually probably already have probiotics in our skincare, right? Especially if you're into K-beauty, you're most likely using fermented ingredients. And this particular cream utilizes lactobacillus ferment lysate, but it's only using 10 parts per million. Sounds like a lot, it's not. Um, so honestly, I think the probiotics in this cream is more marketing than anything else. I wouldn't be too concerned about is it good or isn't it good? Like I said, most of us are already using fermented ingredients and hey, I'll take it where I can get it. But I think the, the majority of the work in this cream is being done by those ceramides, cholesterol, and fatty acids. So the texture of this is really pleasing and quite surprising, so lightweight. It spreads so nicely across the skin and it creates this very light but protective but breathable layer on the skin. Very protective against um, dehydration, against water loss. It brings that essential moisturization and nourishment into the skin, but it's not heavy, it's not greasy. It doesn't leave like a richness on the top of your skin. This is such a pleasing texture, especially if you wanna put your makeup on right away over it. You know, it absorbs in the skin so nicely and it wears so light on the skin. It's not oppressive. Just a very, very pleasing texture to use. Illy Ceramide Ado Concentrate Cream. No stranger to a this or that comparison review and certainly one of my favorite moisturizers. I absolutely love this 
cream, but I do think that it is worth bringing up again because it is a worthy comparison to the Innisfree cream. Now, the ceramides in here, they're using this in a ceramide capsule technology. You can actually see the capsules in the cream. There's the little white flakes, and really what this is meant to do, it's meant to um, help the efficacy of the ceramides, help keep them really fresh and um, efficient, but it is also meant to help deliver those ceramides deeper into the skin. Interestingly enough, this cream from Iliune also contains lactobacillus ferment, which I found really hilarious, quite frankly. Remember that whole probiotic thing? It's like, are they even, like, are they just marketing, like, is it just fermented ingredients? So for one cream to call itself a probiotic cream, but the other cream to use the same ingredient, like I just think it's really funny and um, it probably makes the whole probiotics thing just pure marketing, at least in my mind it does. Now let me tell you something shocking. <laughs> When you look at both of these ingredients lists side by side, the Innisfree compared to the Iliune, the Innisfree actually looks more um, impressive. And like I told you, the Iliune is like my bias. So like I was shook. And let me tell you why I say that. It's because it comes down to ceramides. Now the Innisfree uses two types of the pseudoceramides as well as just straight up ceramides. The Iliune only uses one form of MEA pseudoceramides. The other thing is the Innisfree actually discloses the amounts that they use um, with the parts per million system. So they're not using percentages, they're using parts per million, um, always tricky. Um, but it kind of makes your brain think that there's more ceramides in the Innisfree than there is in the Iliune. And now I know you're waiting for me to somehow like explain why Iliune has the same amount or Innisfree has more, and I just can't do that. And do you know why I can't? Because Iliune doesn't disclose how much ceramides they're using. So the argument's kind of pointless. Yes, three different types of ceramides seem like it would be better, like a variety is always good, but there's not a compelling difference between the types of ceramides that they're using, at least in, in, my, uh, in my opinion. So I can't tell you that. It, it looks like there's more, but there may not be more. It might just be a trick. Uh, they might be just be playing a marketing trick on us by telling us the parts per million. So um, I can't really answer that question, but I have to say that like, I was kind of like, whoa, when I looked at both of them, because it definitely does appear that there could potentially be a little bit more in the Innisfree. So which one is better, right? This or that? And I have to tell you, you know, the argument about which one has more ceramides for me personally just really doesn't matter. And the reason that I say that, the reason I'm confident saying that is just because I've been using the Iliune so much, I know that it works. You know, I know that it works the way I want a ceramide cream to work. So in my eyes, the ingredients for both are excellent. Now, the price, obviously, the Iliune, you're gonna get a lot more product, uh, about three times as much for um, the, about the same price as the Innisfree. So definitely Iliune gets higher marks for the price and the amount for the value. But I really think that this or that comes down to texture because the Innisfree is a lot more lighter in comparison to the Iliune, which is why I think this might be the better option for people who are slightly more oily. Maybe your combination or combination up more towards the oily side or just straight up oily skin, but you still need those ceramides. Maybe you suffer from dehydration on your skin or you have a weak moisture barrier. You want the benefits of a ceramide cream without the weight. The Iliune I think actually is good for combination skin too. I actually started using the Iliune for the first time in August um, when my skin is a lot more combination oily in that T-zone and dry in that U-zone. And I still liked it then. So I'm confident saying that if you are on the combination sky side and a more nourishing, maybe slightly more medium weight cream is like your jam, you're gonna like the Iliu and it definitely does moisturize a little bit more than the Innisfree. It's a little bit more nourishing. That's what it comes down to is your preference on texture. So this or that, that's definitely up to you. So let's move on to our Centella sleeping mask battle between the Laneige Sika sleeping mask versus the Purito Dermide Sika barrier sleeping pack. So one of the more unique things about both of these products actually is that both sleeping masks are shea butter based 
products. These really rely heavily uh, as their main emollient for shea butter, which is very rich and creamy and moisturizing. Now, Centella is definitely the star ingredient that both of these products claim. Now, Purito is using 225,000 parts per million of Centella. It is listed as the second ingredient on the ingredients list, kind of indicating to us that there's a good amount in here. Not only does it use Centella in a high amount, but it also uses the four separate compounds of Centella, which are matacasticide, azeaticide, azeatic acid, and matacasic acid. So we've got a lot of Centella packed into this product. Laneige is a horse of a different color, if you will, because Laneige, while they call their product Centella or Sika mask, it actually uses what they're calling a Sika derived ingredient called forest yeast. And this is not an ingredient that we know a lot of, of information on outside of what Laneige tells us. And what Laneige tells us is this is an ingredient really similar to the benefits of matacasticide. So it's got some great um, ability to soothe irritation on the skin, bring down redness, and help strengthen your skin's moisture barrier. What I have to say about that is um, that all sounds really great, but I will admit that the ingredient that they're calling forest yeast is listed as the third to last ingredient indicated indicating that's probably there in smaller quantities this does also use separate compounds of centella we have no centella extract by the way on this list um, but it does use the compounds of centella but only three of them uh, it does not include matacasticide but it does have the three other components so it is kind of seeming like it's coming up a little bit short in the centella department at least if you look at them side by side there definitely appears to be a lot more centella happening in the purito mask now just some little odds and ends things i i want you to know about um the purito mask does also contain ceramide so that's definitely a bonus the Laneige does not um which automatically makes me think that if you're looking for more barrier support purito might be the way to go one thing that you do need to be aware of with the Purito sleeping mask, particularly if you have acne prone skin. The Purito mask is using olive oil as well as coconut oil in its formulation. And those may not be the best thing for acne prone skin. So if you know that you have an individual sensitivity, just be aware of those two ingredients. What you need to know about the Laneige sleeping mask is that it contains two essential oils. Yeah, it has tea tree oil in it as well as something called martini oil. It's also known as palmarosa oil. It is actually related to geranium oil. So two fragrant essential oils um, in this one. So definitely be aware if you're sensitive. All right, let's compare these textures. And really the best way to describe the Laneige Sika sleeping mask is buttery, rich, nourishing butter. Oh, it is very, very, very rich cream. So nourishing, in fact, that it actually does build up a little bit heavy and a little bit greasy on the skin. It will leave you shiny. It will leave you a little bit oilier. The texture of this, I just, I didn't really like the, the buildup on my skin when I would wake up, I'd just be so shiny. And it just really wasn't my favorite thing in the world. Now the Purito is definitely creamy and it is nourishing, but it's definitely not as buttery. I actually would not even use the word buttery to describe the Purito sleeping mask. It's so light on the skin. Again, this is not heavy and there's no greasiness to it. It feels really protective on the skin, but it doesn't leave any richness behind and it absorbs really, really fast, which I really appreciate. It wears so nicely on the skin. It doesn't make you feel greasy or it doesn't feel heavy on the skin. It's just really a really ideal texture in my mind. I do think that the Purito is a clear winner in our this or that battle. I mean, it's got more centella in it. It's got ceramides. It has a more ideal texture texture for a sleeping mask in my opinion and it gives you more product for a more affordable price so I mean like honestly like it just wins right but I do want to just put a word of warning out there maybe becoming slightly more biased which is to say if you are looking at these sleeping packs to help solve your irritated skin or a damaged moisture barrier please do not use Laneige um <laughs> I fell into this trap of thinking too it was a really lovely product it did seem to bring some benefits to my skin, but at the end of the day, using products with essential oils on damaged or irritated skin is a recipe for disaster. 
and it, it's not going to make your skin better. It's actually probably going to inhibit your ability to heal your skin. So just avoid it. It's just not the best ingredient for irritated skin or damaged skin. So I hope you guys loved that episode and hopefully I helped you pick out some new products or maybe even saved you some money. And I'm always curious to know what comparisons you wanna see in the next video. So definitely drop all those products in the comment box below. If you love the video, but you haven't hit subscribe yet, please consider subscribing to my channel. I release two new Korean skincare focused videos every single week. Turn on notifications so you're never out of the loop. And hey, if you want to see more reviews and skincare content from me, come on over to Instagram. I post there on the daily about all my skincare routines, adventures, and I post mini reviews. So definitely come join me on Instagram and don't forget to leave me a comment saying hi. I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. I hope you're having a fantastic day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.